Hi guys, Kim here. Welcome to Backyard Blooms. In today's video, we're going to do a full tour for August 2022. We're going to do the side garden here, the back garden, and the full front garden. So a full garden tour. I'm going to break it up in two different parts. One, part one, we're going to do the side garden and back. Part two, we're going to do another part of the side backyard garden and in the front garden. As we take a tour, we're going to do some pruning. We're going to prune up some peonies. We're going to take out a sprinter boxwood. We are going to prune up some David Austin roses, and I'm going to show you guys how to do that. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, it's free to subscribe, and you can get notifications of my upcoming videos. In my next video, we're going to plant some echinaceas, which is another word for coneflower. I'm going to show you how to do that, and we're going to plant some sedum. This morning I'm going to start on the side here, see our holly tree here, we replace these lights with something a little bit more attractive, and you can see our American flag here, I'm try to hide these trash cans with this holly, let's come around here. Take a timer back and bought these echinaceas that I need to plant. I bought three yellow, and I thought I bought three bubblegum, but obviously I didn't. This is a different color. And I'm going to plant those in a different video. And then I have some sprinter boxwoods that line the house here. Camellia, white by the night, and I'm going to try to train up on a trellis. So eventually I'm going to buy some trellises that go along the side of this house here. I think that would be gorgeous once this shrub starts to take off. And it's doing well. You can see some little buds that are going to come out here. I had to treat this tree earlier. It had some black spot and deficient iron. You can still see a little bit of the black spot on that leaf right there. So that's what that looks like. Usually these leaves will fall off. So I'm trying to get ahead of all that. And then these are all annuals here. I have five clumps like I would plant in a planter. These are proven winner, double impatient, impatient. I always thought it was impatience, but it's impatient. And the luscious lantana. Love this plant. So if you need something that gets makes a big impact in your garden. This is definitely one that you should get. And then this newly noir coleus that's new this year. And it puts off these little lilac blooms. And pollinators really love love that. As you can see right there, there's that big bumblebee. Let's see if it comes around. put in the sidewalk this past year too from Pavers Plus and then replanted the sod right here next to us and you can see that this fence right here is our property line but the trellises that I like to buy are going to be from Garden Supply so I'm going to order those soon. And you can see the boxwoods back there. And I do need to come back and prune a little bit back here with this colia so these boxwoods can still get some light. And I'm going to do that today. So what we'll do is just 
for instance, like this one will just come in and prune like all the way back to here and take this out. And then I'm going to do this one as well. these boxwoods right here will get some more light so I need to do that one as well I'll come back in here after I'm done with this video and finish that let me just step back so this is two luscious lantanas and two newly noir coleus and I planted four of the rocka Coco Double Impatient. Better for sun or shade. But this side yard gets just, um, after, I'm sorry, it just gets morning sun. And I could probably trim these back a little bit because you can't even really see these impatients in here. So, what you can do here, if I want to prune these lantanas, look at this big. I want to prune these. I'll just I want to do that one because the bee's a little the bee's not happy with me. I'll just come back, pull it down, and trim. Say my pruners here. These are focal pruners. I'm gonna go like right there. Once they don't get sun, then they're going to die off, and I don't want that to happen because I do love this color combination. And I'll repeat this again. I love this. This is a win-win combination right there. That would be pretty in any kind of garden container. So here we have a little sidewalk. When we put in this sidewalk, we should have put in another little sidewalk here, but we didn't think about it, so my husband did this one. These are just pavers from Home Depot, and then we got some concrete stain and painted them very similar color, and it worked out well. Those are all my timers for my drip. And as you can see, I have boxwoods back here as well. another white by the night and I need to get these trimmed up also so they can get sun. Look at these little flowers on this newly no more. And as we come down here another white by the night. Camellia, I had three. I had one in the center and it didn't make it. I just felt like it maybe didn't get enough sun. I had too much water, so I had to pull that one out. But I'll take these trellises off, that these wood trellises that came with it, and eventually train it up a real pretty iron trellis. And I have boxwoods right here. And I was going to let these boxwoods grow a little higher so they could hide this air conditioner. But as you can see, I'm having a problem. Can you see the color difference between this first boxwood, the second one, and the third one? So the one in the middle here is dying. And how do I know that? So I can tell by the color, but I wouldn't just pull something up just because of that. I can tell by the feel of it. So this is crispy and this one's not. And then I don't know if you ever heard of the scratch test, but I'm going to show you. Let me get down here without making you dizzy. So I'm going to come down here to the base and I'm going to get a limb here. Focus 
eyes and I'm gonna scratch it right here. And that one has a little bit of green still to it, but when I scratched this one earlier, I didn't see any green on that one. So let me see. Scratch here, my fingernail. You see how that is not focus there. That is not green. And I'm going to come over here to this shrub and do a little scratch test on that one and just show you the difference. I'm going to scratch here. It's a harder scratch. And you can see that there's more green in that one. And there was this one over here. Anyways, there's no sense me keeping this shrub and just letting it completely die. I mean, it's dead anyways. It's just going to continue to get more brown and brown, so I'm going to pull that up today. And then I'm having some little fungal problems. When I pull, when I search this fungus, I always said I felt like God love this design because do you know what it looks like but it said it was hell fungus and I'll throw some information up there but when we try to pull this up it's kind of messy at the bottom I we'll have one there and a few more growing right there my husband said he pulled up a couple this past week but it's got like a sticky substance on it. It's gross. So anyways, there's that fungus that's growing. You can see part of my drip there. And I don't feel like this shrub's gotten too much water or not enough water because I have drip there and obviously this one's happy and all these right next to it are doing great. And then to add a little bit of accent, I have a shepherd's hook here. Just some kind of little whimsical thing. It spins around when the wind blows. And then I have a little solar light here. And I actually bought these two items at a bird store where I get my bird seed. And I'll share the front of the store with you guys too. So I have a little clip of that. So let me pick my pruners up. So we're gonna pull this shrub up. I'll share that with you in a different video and then going down the sidewalk here I have another planter here you can't see the planter at all and I had the same theme newly in the war coleus black potato vine and you can see this little bloom that the black potato vine lets off I have some salvia in there. And I've already trimmed these several times so they wouldn't get so tall. They do and they will break when the wind blows. They'll get heavy. I'll try to keep them trimmed. And we've done lots of little videos with this side garden here. Emerald green arborvitaes, and this is what these lime lights are looking like in August. They're starting to get a little bit of their pink hues. Let me step away here. And let's walk down here. The side garden is about 70 feet. Jazzberries. I love 
love that color combination. I don't know what's going on here. The wind must have gotten this. So I can come in and trim some of these up today as well. Trying to focus here. We'll just come in and take our pruners. And I'm not going to start, I'm not going to cut here, but if we were cutting by one third, I'd say maybe here, just right in front of a node. And that is what a node is called. So you can see one there, one here. So just right above a node and just trim that off. And if you wanted to, you can take these and probably dry them this time of year. First part of August is a good time to start drying them. So what I do is put them in a, like maybe two inches of water. I put several of them in there in some kind of container, mason jar, and just let them absorb the water and then they'll start to dry and then you can use them for whatever you'd like. I usually try to put them in the container that they're going to dry in. That way the little leaves won't fall off. Let me get close up here. You can see how they're starting to turn pink. These are the little lime hydrangeas. And I have some salvia in there that I trimmed back but hasn't flushed out with any kind of blooms yet. A little magnolia. There's a bloom right there that's about ready to come out. Grace. I still have my pruners with me because I was going to show you in a video here. These are my peonies and they're fairly new and you can see that they're just done. They're turning brown. The roots are still alive but these are they're just too hot. So we're going to come in and I'm going to cut these all the way back down at the base here. Like so. And see how brown it is. Peonies live forever. Like a hundred years once you get them going. But they do take, I've heard, close to three years for them to start rooting in. And this one's also brown, but I have a little bit of still green on this. And you can see my support cage here because they say the blooms are really heavy and they need a support cage to grow up on. Mine really aren't that big yet. So I'm just going to come in and just trim all of this back. But we'll keep the roots. And whenever you plant peonies, they don't like to be planted too deep into the ground. So maybe one to two inches, no more than two inches. And I'd probably say more closer to an inch. Get all these pulled away. And then I have a few more over here. I've actually planted like three or four peonies. I planted more than three. And some of them didn't come up. And they do need full sun. So, got all those pruned back. This is a Daisy May that I pruned back, but people have told me that they're supposed to rebloom, but this variety for me has not. And that's a Penicillium right there that I need to get moved. It just doesn't give enough sun. And you can see the lemon coral sedum. The limelight standard tree. The blooms aren't too heavy for this tree this year, so give it two to three years for the stems to get real strong and they'll start holding these blooms up. And butterfly bush that I need to deadhead in such a bad way. So 
So I'm gonna just show you guys how I would deadhead this and I'm not gonna do the, all of it on film. But you can see this is a spent bloom with just a little bit of flowers on the end there. But if you take these blooms off, I'm gonna cut down here. Just like so. And they'll rebloom again. So like this one here. I'm gonna come all the way back to the stem and that's where it'll rebranch off. And you can tell I have a bunch of them. Look how pretty that flower is up close. And this bush has been here for every bit of a solid two years. Maybe this is the third year. First part of the third year. You can see some little moss on there. I don't know what type those are. All right. And these are the Nellie Stephen Hollies. cherry tree and my little cut flower garden there. And this is my rose garden. Crepe myrtle blooms. did a video of how we designed this area and the theme that I came up so make sure you watch that video and this is Gabriel Oak this rose smells divine bloom right now. This is Justiva Ab. This is an Oakland Holly that desperately needs some iron. I already actually gave it iron. You can tell like on the bottom here that it's starting to green up. So I put the iron on the base of the plant so it's starting to work its way up. I need to get in there and get all these dead leaves out of there because it had some black spot that I treated it for and of course they fell off. But I'm going to show you closer up the issue that I had with this tree in a different video. This is the same tree as that one. So you can tell the difference here. Not a different tree. All of these sprinters are doing great. So out of 100 sprinters that I have, only had one die to me. I think that's awesome. And this is my Galloway urn from Unique Stone. I have some jazzberries. You can see a few of the cake pops that are still popping out there. I actually made it. I planted three and as you can tell, let me move these jazzberries back. Well, you can tell the dead one in there that I need to get out. That was a cake pop. These jazzberries just outperformed those cake pops. And didn't get any sun and died. So I'm not sure I'll put that combination in again. And then again, the newly noir. Coleus. I try to pick about four 
type of annuals that go along with each other really well and stay with that theme for the year. These are my bird bass. Try to keep the same theme of color also when I'm accenting my garden. So most of my flower pots are all blue aqua color. We've had these chairs forever and we repainted them so that has served as well. And this one is Princess Alexandra of Kent. And I didn't prune these on purpose because I wanted to show you what the deer have done. So let me step down off this ledge here. Okay, this is where the deer have ate my buds. Because when I prune, I'll prune all the way down to five leaves and this is not my pruning. So there, there. Here. It looks like a pruning job, but that's not my pruning job. So when I do prune, I'm going to just show you. I'm going to come down to five leaves. So this is a set of three here. And actually, this is just a whole cluster. So when I prune, I'm going to take that whole cluster off and go down to a set of five leaves. This is five. But this set of five leaves is going that way. I would prefer a set going this way. That way when it regrows, it'll grow out instead of in. So this one's going in, this one's going out, this one's still going out. So I'm going to come in and prune right in front of the set of five leaves here. And just take that whole cluster off. It's really hard to do this close up, but I want to just give you an idea of how to do that. Now this spent bloom here, this one, I already have some new growth right here. You see? So that's where the new roses are going to come. So I'm just going to take this here and just clip off right there. But I've learned some different garden hacks that I'm going to do or try. So this is another example where the deer ate it here. And I already have a new growth on this one, so I'm not going to take this one all the way down to here. If I didn't have new growth on top, that I would. But I'm going to take this and just trim here. And that way I'll get a new rose there. This is the same thing where the deer have ate here. Let's see. I don't really have any new growth there. That's where they ate there too. The rose will come off this new red growth here. Well, this one has none, so I'm going to take this one all the way back to this set of leaves here. I just trimmed off all of this. So I'm having a time learning how to battle and keep these deer away from my roses. I'm going to try a different product that's a fertilizer that I'm going to share with you in a different video. This is what this rose garden looks like from my common space in the back of the house here. I have some bird feeders here. Oh, 
Polly's. That's what the fire pit area looks like. And back here. And then my cut flower garden right there. This is a side garden that have the Yoshio cryptomeria trees. show you some dahlias that we have that are looking gorgeous. One there. We're a zone 8, so some of these dahlias I don't have to redig up. And I kept that one there from last year. My channel's called Backyard Blooms with Kim, so going to share with you all the blooms. That's a celebration rose. I have a climbing rose that's on this trellis from Garden Supply here that I need to stake. I asked you guys, I didn't know if I cut this clematis spike if it would regrow and bloom and guess what? It is. So I have some daylilies in front of that. And here's some more dahlias that are growing here. Stevens holly that I took the bottom part off and made it look more like a topiary. It does need to be trimmed again. And look at these gorgeous blooms here. So after this tour, I'm going to come back out here and cut these and bring them inside so I can enjoy them. Awesome. I don't know if it's getting nibbled by the deer or what, but maybe I can give that a little bit more fertilizer. And then one there. And look at this gorgeous bloom here too. Oh, I'm in awe with God's beauty. And there's one that's spent. So even for your dahlias, you want to trim these back and they'll keep producing blooms. So we don't want to give energy to this dead, the one that's already had died. We want it to give energy to producing more flowers. So make sure you trim those. And I'm not sure what this one's gonna be yet. back of the climbing rose there. And some more dahlias here. 